Welcome to our group presentation, Assignment 3, that was compiled for the unit Research, Teaching and Learning 2. Our group members are Scott McEwan, Milan Kupik, Rami Husseini and Noah Taylor. Our group research project aimed to address the complex issue of classroom management. To address our overarching topic, we used a variety of different data collection techniques. First-hand observations were used to identify common student misbehaviours and why such inappropriate behaviours occur. First-hand observations in order to observe the subtopic of why students misbehave and what are the common types of misbehaviour. Interviews with a parent, a teacher and a member of staff were conducted in order to answer the subtopic of how students learn best. Surveys with parents were also conducted to answer the subtopic of the impacts of socioeconomic status on student behaviour. A further study with parents, teachers and students was conducted in order to address the subtopic of learning disorders in relation to ADHD. Our literature reviews synthesised a number of themes. One of the themes involved the importance of stress management and its impacts on future student retention. Willingham 2012 suggests that students growing up in low socioeconomic families have greater burdens of worry and stress that can negatively impact their abilities and actions. Furthermore, Willingham 2012 also suggests that there is a possible linkage in parental stress and increased behavioural problems in low SES students. The second theme that was synthesised in our group analysis was that teachers need to be good managers in the classroom. According to Sun and Sheck 2012, an effective teacher needs to be able to manage a number of disruptive behaviours such as talking out of turn, physical aggression, verbal aggression and general disobedience. The third theme that came from our group analysis is the need for teachers to have an explicit understanding of various educational approaches and pedagogies in order to support students with learning disorders. Barclay 2012 states that teachers are required to have effective teaching about how students learn differently and the types of teaching strategies that are most effective for different kinds of learning. The final theme generated from our group literature reviews was that by increasing student engagement, students become more susceptible to learning. Milner and Tenner 2010 state that lower levels of student engagement directly lead to lower levels of academic achievement. Recently, the rise of technology in the 21st century has also had an impact on how students behave in the classroom. Teachers and students both agreed that students also misbehaved as a result of a boring or impractical lesson. In order to combat this, teachers need to use interactive activities that engage the students. These activities could include Kahoot quizzes and other ICT activities. Teachers have also suggested that students misbe misbehaved because the teacher was not prepared for the lesson or was inexperienced or had unreasonable expectations. Research by Katruba 2013 suggests that teachers can reduce misbehaviour in their classroom if they were provided with appropriate training and if they set clear rules and expectations at the beginning of the year. On completion of our data collection and analysis, our group synthesised a number of themes. The first of which was that there was a correlation between SES and student behaviour which was highlighted through survey data. From our data, we found respondents had mixed opinions on the impact of SES on student behaviour. In response to the question, to what extent can socioeconomic status be linked to student misbehaviour in the classroom, 50% of respondents indicated that they were undecided three on the Likert scale, while 50% indicated an increased extent, four on the Likert scale. This leads to the second integration of our themes, where we found that the enforcement of specific rules leads to increased performance of the entire classroom. This was partially drawn from first-hand observation, where a teacher removed the laptop from one misbehaving student and resulted in the rest of the class respecting the rules and focusing on classwork. 
A further theme that was synthesized from our group analysis suggested that in-service training resulted in better prepared teachers that could better assist and support their students in a more productive way. Our data has shown that there is a gap between students with ADHD and discrepancies between academic performance and expectations. On a Likert scale, where one being poor and four being excellent, the overwhelming response of respondents indicated that behavioral and academic performance hovered at an average of approximately 1.8 on the Likert scale, indicating below average. The fourth theme synthesized through our group analysis was that one of the primary needs for proper classroom management was to ensure that students are supplied with clear guidelines and expectations for their learning in order to achieve the most from their education. This is supported by data collected from many of the interviewees, including teachers, parents, ad and admin staff. The integration of these themes allowed us to synthesize an updated overarching theory on classroom management. Our updated theory suggests that teachers must be properly trained in order to develop the skills needed to differentiate specific rules and guidelines that are tailored for individual students and their individual learning needs. Our theory suggests that current teachers may not be fully prepared with the skills needed to properly differentiate content to reach all students. A reason for this may be addressed within a separate research project by O'Neill and Stevenson, 2012, who reported that many pre-service teachers do not feel confident or well prepared when it comes to dealing with student misbehaviour in secondary classrooms. Our own research has suggested that when learning is not tailored to meet the needs of all students, students may become less engaged. This then leads to a number of classroom management problems such as increased misbehaviour, disinterest, low student self-esteem and ultimately lowered academic achievements. This overarching theory prompted us to develop an up updated action research question for use in a future study. The updated research question asks, what is the best way to increase student engagement and performance through effective content differentiation in the classroom? In order to thoroughly address this proposed question, the Future Action Research Study will utilise an integrated mixed method data collection approach that includes classroom observation, student surveys and teacher-student interviews that will inform the development of strategies to enhance student engagement and address proper classroom management strategies. The reason why we chose similar data collection techniques as, we, as used in our original study was that we found a broad range of methods allowed us a greater perspective with which to draw conclusions from. This type of mixed method collection will encourage meaningful discussions, planning and practices while having a shared aim and objective to engage students and maintain classroom management. Data collected from our future research study will be treated in a similar way to our previous studies. Following on, we would engage in a round of coding to draw out a number of categories and themes in order to generate an updated overall theory. As these data collection techniques will rely on responses from student participants, ethical considerations must be taken into account. Students aged 16 and above can be presented with consent forms, whereas any students will require any whereas any younger students will require the signed approval of their parents. The participant will be reminded that they are under no obligation to continue with data collection protocols and may withdraw at any time at their own discretion. As with any study of this type, all data collected will be de-identified and participants will not be named in any of these research findings. The questions used in the surveys and interviews will be designed to address the specific research proposal question and will focus on methods of engagement, differentiation and individual student needs. The findings of a secondary study may then be implemented in the classroom to increase student engagement and student achievement. This secondary study also serves to highlight the need for specific professional development in the area of content differentiation. A successful and effective professional development must go beyond just enhancing teacher knowledge. It must support translating newfound knowledge into practice. 
This concludes our presentation. Thank you for listening and we trust that you have found our presentation interesting and informative. Thank you again.